So Tom, can employers insist that their employees are vaccinated? In short, Peter, the answer to that is yes. And to provide you a bit of context, it's worthwhile just stepping back to the start of this year when employers were looking at calling back their workforces on a large scale and we were hopeful for a fast vaccine rollout. At that time, the answer to that question would have been limited to a very small number of industries, such as aged care, childcare and quarantine workers, where they were dealing with vulnerable persons or large cases of potentially COVID-19 cases. Um, fast forward to now, when we're dealing with the Delta strain, the landscape has changed dramatically. And because of the transmissibility of the Delta strain, both within workplaces and also the workers' families, arguably there is going to be a broadening of that group of employers that can insist on their employees being vaccinated before they return to work. So what are the, what are the parameters for demanding that somebody's vaccinated? One of, the, one of the key parameters is that the direction needs to be a lawful and reasonable one. And I appreciate that the, the concept of reasonableness is as long as you can make it. But in these circumstances, an employer could legitimately say, I have a duty, a legal duty, to ensure the health and safety of my staff, of all of my workers. So it sounds as though you've answered the question then that, um, that an employer can insist that somebody's vaccinated in order to come to the office. Uh, that's right, but it's important to remember that it cannot be a, a one-size blanket mandatory policy that is imposed on the workforce. It needs to be approached on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, it but if you've, got a if you've got somebody who's vulnerable in the office and you could argue that a lot of people are vulnerable in the office given the Delta strain and the impact it's having, then you could easily argue, couldn't you, that nobody comes into the office unvaccinated? Yeah, that's right. Um, what I was going to say, though, that the employer in those sort of circumstances and using that example, which is a great one, um, would need to look at some alternative control measures. So rather than insisting on everyone being vaccinated, can I move certain parts of the business to... Um, areas where socially distancing can occur, where PPE can be worn, where masks can be worn to mitigate against that risk? Or do I have no other option but to insist on mandatory vaccination across the workforce? Yeah, Those sort of alternative not, control measures are really important to consider. Yeah, but you're not suggesting that everybody, everybody in our office building has to wear PPE? No, no. And for that reason, where there are vulnerable workers or is there's that risk of transmissibility, um, arguably, I think that those sort of organisations could insist on COVID-19 vaccinations. Right. So can an employer then sack somebody who hasn't been vaccinated? Yes. So provided there is that lawful and reasonable direction that has been given, um, in circumstances where an employee refuses to be vaccinated, and there is no legitimate basis for that refusal. For example, the employee has not justified that refusal by way of medical reasons, religious beliefs, or any of those protective, uh, protected attributes under discrimination laws. Then the employee employer could consider taking disciplinary action against that employee, including standing them down on leave without pay, or for example, terminating their employment. However, if they were to terminate their employment, uh, yes, the commission might ultimately find, the Fair Work Commission might ultimately find that there was a valid reason for termination. However, in the current climate where the community is facing a high degree of anxiety, apprehension, uh, the commission may look at that decision to terminate that employee's employment as a harsh one. So the difficulty is for an employee who genuinely doesn't want to be vaccinated, they're going to have some difficult choices. Yeah. Um, one of the key risks is discrimination risks. For example, that might include a, a pregnant employee um, who 
has not been vaccinated because a lot of the clinical trials that the COVID-19 vaccinations were based on didn't include pregnant women in those trials. So if an employee can produce uh, some evidence or a declaration from their, med uh, their treating medical practitioner that suggests they do not be vaccinated, um, and if an employer imposed a COVID-19 vaccination policy company-wide, and that impacted that particular employee, there would definitely be an, an indirect discrimination risk um, that that employee would be able to make a claim on. But aren't you looking at it from the wrong side? Because if you've got vulnerable staff, yep. then it's Hobson's choice, really. Yep. I mean, you can try and put them in a different office and that kind of stuff, but you're not going to have an office full of people wearing PPE. No. No. Uh, there, there would be, um, and there is requirements under the discrimination law to uh, discrimination laws to see what reasonable accommodations could be made for those employees where they might be exposed to an indiscrimination, indirect discrimination risk. For example, can that employee suitably work from home? So, if you're an employee and you genuinely don't want to get vaccinated, how would you argue your case? Look, in the context of anti-vaxxers, and I know this is a, uh, an area that is fraught with danger, um, an ideological objection uh, to vaccination is not a protected attribute under discrimination law. The other areas of religious beliefs, age, pregnancy, disability, they all are. So where do you think this is going to land? Just do a bit of future forecasting. Where do you think that, are we going to end up with an understanding that you must be vaccinated unless you have a really good excuse in order to come back to work? In short, we are progressing to that. I've seen even over the last week, for example, a slow creep towards that sort of position. If you look at the US, for example, a number of organisations over there are requiring their employees to be vaccinated, a number of universities. Even more recently, um, a number of countries have introduced laws requiring employers to insist on vaccination before their employees return to work. Um, we're now seeing this sort of debate occurring across public sporting events and concerts, for example, whereby um, attendees can only attend if they have had vaccinations. In that case, what we need, and again, I'm speaking from a corporate affairs point of view, is strong messaging from the premiers and the federal government about where this is going to land so that people have got time to get used to the notion of, comp of compulsory vaccination. Yeah, absolutely. And we have the, the functions of the public health orders which have now been applied for example in New South Wales um, anyone in that's a quarantine worker a transportation worker or an airport worker must be vaccinated and the federal government introduced mandatory vaccination for aged care workers so it's it is happening and I would expect to see that those sort of employers and that group of employers will be broadened over time. Tom Brett greatly appreciated Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, Peter. It's been wonderful.